Mitchell. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My right honourable friend is amongst the most forthright defenders of the rights of this House and an eloquent supporter, perhaps the most eloquent supporter in this House, of the democratic principle. So when will he respond positively to the statement that Mr Speaker made from his chair at 3.30 on the 14th of June when he instructed the government to bring forward a vote on the breaking of our promise on the point seven. Uh, he knows uh, perfectly well that the estimates are not the right route for this. The estimates have never been voted down. And in that connection, may I refer him to a speech made from that dispatch box on the 24th of July, 1905, by the late Prime Minister Arthur Balfour, which set out the position on estimates uh, very clearly. In his forthright defence of this House, will he ensure that before the summer there is a vote on this terrible decision that was made by the government, which has done such damage to our international reputation and which is leading to the avoidable death of more than 100,000 people. Um, Mr Speaker, the estimates are votable. There will be a debate, a full day's debate, on the Foreign and Commonwealth Office and the Development Office. It will be an opportunity for my, honourable, my right honourable friend to raise any issues that he wishes to raise at that occasion. And there can be votes on estimates, and there have been votes on estimates. It is a perfectly reasonable parliamentary procedure to use. So the government is facilitating the debate that he asks for, but it is also following the law that he will be aware of that was passed with relation to the 0.7% commitment, which requires that a statement be laid before this House if that target is not met in, the, in a particular calendar year. The government is following, will follow, has every intention of following the law that was passed by Parliament. That is what Her Majesty's Government does. But in these financial circumstances, it is absolutely right that we are reducing our overseas aid commitments. We have seen a significant decline uh, in our national income. We have faced £407 billion needed within this country to maintain the economy during the uh, pandemic. We remain one of the most generous donors in the world, with a level of overseas aid higher than any socialist government in this country's history has achieved, something uh, that they carp about now, but that when they're in office they did nothing about. So we are delivering, we have delivered, we are right to do so, and there will be the debate, because it is always the right of this House to debate the subjects that it sees fit. And if they want other debates, they can have them on opposition days, which there hasn't been. No opposition day debate, so clearly... The opposition doesn't want to be saying to the people in Batley and Spen that they want to spend their money abroad, do they? So they're running away from it. The Backbench Business Committee hasn't had one. The government is providing one in due course.